We have Toby Groats coming up, so let me, um, my pleasure to introduce you this morning, Toby. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here, and thank you for inviting me to this conference. My talk today is going to be about Bruce De Palma, who I visited in December of 1993, and just recently have really fully begun to appreciate the depth of his experience and his knowledge because he kind of started and gave the foundation for what we're doing today. He inspired a lot of inventors, and his research, I think, is behind what we need to understand if we're really going to bring free energy to fruition. I guess I can say this now. When something happens like this, like somebody coming up with a simple way of extracting energy from space, which will transform society, or at least spark the transformation of society from a consumptive to an outgoing uh, expanding situations, very special time. It's like everything contracts down to a point and then expands out from a point. Uh, Chardin, in his work about the future history of man, talks about this point. I believe there's a myth to free energy in that in any intelligent society, in any planet in the universe, when it reaches the point in its intellectual development where it can conceive that this is a possible principle the same people, the same souls, are manifest to do the same job. So you have to say to yourself, why did, I, why did I call it the end machine? Because it was so clear in my mind to call it the end machine that it, I didn't have to think about it. It just came, to, just like I knew it wouldn't have me drag. One of the most intriguing and controversial inventions in the history of energy the end machine free energy generator created by the brilliant scientist Bruce De Palma. We'll dive deep into how this device works, its remarkable potential, and why governments may be suppressing it. Let's get started. To begin, let's step back and understand what exactly free energy is. Free energy refers to any system that can produce more usable energy output than the energy input required to operate it. This seemingly defies the laws of thermodynamics, but cutting-edge scientists like Bruce De Palma have found ingenious ways to make it possible. Enter the end machine De Palma's groundbreaking invention first demonstrated in the 1970s. At its core is a spinning metal rotor suspended in a magnetic field. When spun up to high speeds, the rotor generates an electric current. But get this, the energy required to spin, it is less than the electricity it produces, making it a free energy device. How is this possible? De Palma discovered that by carefully engineering the rotor's materials and magnetic field, he could harness a phenomenon known as homopolar induction to extract free energy from the quantum vacuum this seemingly defies classical physics, but cutting-edge theories suggest it may be tapping into untapped sources of ambient energy. Imagine for a moment, a device small enough to fit in your home that can power your entire house, indefinitely, with no need for grid electricity, gasoline, or any other fuel. That's the revolutionary promise of the end machine. De Palma's prototypes have demonstrated the ability to continuously generate two to three kilowatts of clean, limitless electricity. Now you might be wondering, if this technology is real, why aren't we all using it already? Well, but that's where the story takes a dark turn. Right now we have the entrenched energy monopolies and cartels. You know, we have OPEC and we have the seven sister oil companies that control all the oil and energy. But what people have to understand is that the people who run the energy business in this world, which is the biggest business on the planet, turning over four to five trillion dollars a year, it's bigger than guns and drugs, it's bigger than defense, they control the newspapers, they control the governments. But these companies are so big that they regulate the government which regulates them. You see, the end machine and other free energy devices pose an existential threat to the trillion dollar fossil fuel and utility industries. 
Many believe these industries have actively suppressed and discredited this technology to protect their profits. Despite decades of proof-of-concept demonstrations, government research contracts, and even a successful test powering a US Navy submarine, the end machine has never made it to mass production. De Palma and other free energy pioneers have faced intimidation, litigation, mysterious deaths, and their labs have even been raided and destroyed in suspected acts of sabotage. It's a disturbing pattern that has repeated itself time and again with transformative energy breakthroughs. But that hasn't stopped the determined scientists and engineers still working to advance free energy technology like the N machine. In the following sections, we'll take a closer look at how this incredible device works under the hood. At the heart of the N machine is a specialized rotor made from high grade conductive materials that can spin at incredible speeds, up to 50,000 RPM. This rotor is suspended in a strong magnetic field, which induces an electrical current as it spins, just like a generator. But critically, the energy required to spin the rotor is far less than the electricity it produces. De Palma discovered that by carefully controlling the rotor's geometry, materials, and the magnetic field, he could harness a little understood phenomenon called homopolar induction to extract free energy from the quantum vacuum. It's a mind-bending concept, but the experimental results have been replicated and validated by independent researchers worldwide. In the following sections, I'll dive deeper into the technical details, showing you animations and diagrams to help visualize exactly how this process works. We'll examine the unique properties of the N machine's rotor the magnetic field engineering, and the innovative electrical energy extraction circuitry that makes it possible to generate power out of seemingly nothing. Of course, no revolutionary technology is without its challenges. The N machine is no exception. We'll explore some of the key hurdles that have prevented it from reaching mass production, like improving efficiency, dealing with vibration and heat, and finding the right manufacturing processes. But I'll also share updates on the latest breakthroughs that may finally help overcome these barriers. If the end machine can be perfected and mass produced affordably, the implications for the world would be staggering. The environmental benefits alone would be transformative, eliminating the need for polluting fossil fuels and nuclear power. But the impacts could go far beyond just electricity. De Palma envisioned the N machine enabling a new era of space exploration, with spacecraft powered indefinitely without the need to carry heavy fuel loads. It could revolutionize transportation with electric vehicles that never need to be recharged. Even things like implantable medical devices could be powered for life. As we explore the web of corporate interests, political influences, and even government suppression that may be holding back the end machine and other free energy breakthroughs. Time and again, researchers working on devices like the end machine have faced intimidation, litigation, mysterious accidents, and outright sabotage. Their labs have been raided, funding has dried up, and they've been prevented from patenting or commercializing their inventions. Many believe this is a concerted effort by the fossil fuel industry and utility companies to protect their trillion dollar profits. In this section, we'll examine some of the more disturbing incidents and cover-ups surrounding the end machine and free energy technology. From the suspicious death of Bruce De Palma, to government research projects that were suddenly shut down, to the activists and journalists who've been silenced the pattern is deeply troubling. Is the world being deprived of a technology that could change everything? But even in the face of this adversity, the spirit of innovation and determination lives on. There are new generations of scientists, engineers, and DRE enthusiasts around the world who are picking up where De Palma left off, working tirelessly to refine, 
improve and scale up the end machine design. In the following sections, I'll highlight some of these modern pioneers and the progress they've made. We'll look at recent end machine prototypes and demonstrations that have pushed the boundaries of efficiency and power output. I'll share details of the latest breakthroughs in materials science, magnetic field engineering, and energy extraction circuitry that are inching this technology closer to commercial viability. The future is looking brighter for free energy, despite the challenges. As we reach the end of our journey exploring the end machine, I want to leave you with a sense of hope and possibility. While the forces working to suppress this technology are powerful, the human drive for innovation and the quest for clean, limitless energy is even more so. If free energy pioneers can persist in the face of adversity, who knows what the future may hold? In this section, I'll share my vision for a world powered by the end machine and other breakthrough free energy technologies. Imagine a future where every home, business, and mode of transportation is self-sufficient, drawing power from the quantum vacuum rather than polluting fossil fuels. The ramifications for the environment, geopolitics, and the human condition could be profound. Of course, realizing this vision will require overcoming significant technical, economic, and political obstacles. But I believe the potential benefits are so immense that it's a fight worth having. Renewable energy sources like solar and wind are a step in the right direction, but free energy could be the true key to sustainable, equitable, and abundant power for all. In the final sections, I'll lay out a roadmap for how free energy technology like the end machine could potentially be brought to market, despite the forces working against it. This includes strategies for circumventing patent challenges, garnering public support, and finding ways to manufacture and distribute these devices outside the reach of corporate monopolies. It won't be easy, but the stakes are too high to give up. If we can harness the power of the quantum vacuum as De Palma envisioned, we could solve the world's energy crisis, power a new era of space exploration, and liberate humanity from the stranglehold of fossil fuels. The future is ours to create, if we have the courage to seize it. Thank you all for joining me on this exploration of the remarkable N-Machine Free Energy Generator and the inspiring story behind it. I hope I've opened your eyes to the transformative potential of this technology, as well as the troubling forces working to keep it suppressed. Stay curious, stay vigilant, and keep fighting for a better, cleaner, more empowered future for all. Signing off, take care.